My name is Tom Kirkman. I'm chairman of the Planning and Zoning Commission. And I now call back into session the June regular meeting of the City of High Point Planning and Zoning Commission. I will ask the recording secretary to conduct a roll call of the commissioners that are in attendance this evening. Commissioners, when I call your name, please respond present if you are in the meeting room and remote if you are connected remotely. Mr. Kirkman. Uh, in the meeting room, present. Ms. McGill. Present. Ms. Stone. Remote. Ms. Swift. Present. Mr. Venable. Mr. Venable. This, this is Mike Carr, remote. Terry Venable is remote. Mr. Walsh. Present. Mr. Wheatley. Present. Mr. Chairman, you have seven members that responded to roll call. All right, we do have a quorum. This is the continuation of the June 23rd meeting. I want to acknowledge for the record that the commission has received an additional public comment on one of the hearing items. The commission will now deliberate and formulate its recommendation on the items heard on Tuesday evening. Because this is a remote meeting, commission members need to announce their name when making comments, motion for second. Also, all votes made will be by roll call. First item we'll be discussing and voting on this evening will be Zoning Map Amendment 20-05, which is a request to rezone 3.5 acres to the Conditional Zoning Light Industrial District. I do not believe there are any public comments, any further public comments received on this item. Does the applicant have anything additional they would like to present at this time? No, I no, I don't. I'm, I'm fine with everything that's been presented thus far. Very good. Uh, are there any questions or comments from any of the commissioners regarding this item? If not, I will entertain a motion regarding the commission's recommendation. Uh, Mark Walsh uh, makes a motion to approve. John Swift, I'm second that. Very well. Motion has been made by Commissioner Walsh and seconded by Commissioner Swift to approve the motion as presented. Do the commissioners understand the motion? Yes. Okay, so I will ask the recording secretary to conduct a roll call vote. Commissioner, when I call your name, please respond either yes or no in response to the motion to approve uh, ZA 2005. Mr. Kirkman? Yes. Ms. McGill? Yes. Ms. Stone? Yes. Ms. Swift? Yes. Mr. Venable? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Wheatley? Yes. Mr. Chairman, you have seven votes in favor of the motion. Very well. By a vote of seven to zero, this application has been favorably recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission. We will need a consistency statement for the record. Mark Walsh, uh, I move that the Commission adopt the statement that the Zoning Map Amendment 20-05 is consistent with the City's adopted policy guidance, cause as condition, the request CZ-05 excuse me, CD-LI district is supported by policies of the land use plan and does not conflict with previously established land use policies govern this segment of the East Chester Quarter Plan. Furthermore, the request is reasonable and in the public interest because it's conditioned the request of CZLI district will be consistent with the adjacent zoning approval granted for similar abutting LI zone properties lying outside the East Chester Gateway Quarter Overlay District. I'll second that motion. Is there any discussion on the motion that needs to be heard? If not, I'll ask the reporting secretary to conduct a roll call vote. Commissioner, when I call your name, please respond yes or no in favor of the consistency statement. Mr. Kirkman? Yes. Ms. McGill? Yes. Ms. Stone? Yes. Ms. Swift? Yes. Mr. Venable? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Wheatley? Yes. Mr. Chairman, you have seven votes in favor of the consistency statement. By a vote of seven to zero, the consistency statement has been adopted. A final public hearing on this item is tentatively scheduled before the City Council on, what will that date be? July 20th. Is that correct, July 20th? I have to check my list. <laughs> yes, July 20th. Beginning at 5.30 p.m. And I, I believe we don't yet know whether they will be done 
through a, a public hearing or a closed hearing. I mean, that still has to be determined, right? It we don't know if it will be in council chambers or work. It will likely be in council chambers, but it will likely not be open to the public. All right, it'll be a very similar public comment process. Likely. They will get notification. The applicants will get notification as well as the citizens will get notification okay. of how to comment. The, the format is yet to be determined, in other words. Specific. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, next item on tonight's agenda zoning map 20 06. Um, this is a request to rezone 4.9 acres to the light industrial district. Does the app have anything they would like to add uh, this evening? They may not be present. Um, in that case, are there any questions or comments from the commission on this item? If not, I will entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we approve amendment ZA 20-06 as written. Do we have a second? Second. Commissioner McGill has seconded the motion. To approve as presented. Do the commissioners understand the motion or are there any questions? If not, I'll ask the recording secretary to conduct a roll call vote. Commissioner, when I call your name, please say yes or no in response to the motion to approve the A-206. Mr. Kirkman? Yes. Ms. McGill? Yes. Ms. Stone? Yes. Ms. Swift? Yes. Mr. Venable? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Wheatley? Yes. Mr. Chairman, you have seven votes in favor of that motion. Very well. This application has been favorably recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission by a vote of seven to zero. We will require a consistency statement for the record. Uh, this is Ray Wheatley. I move that the commission adopt a statement that zoning and planning map amendment 20-06 is consistent with the city's adopted policy guidance because the site is designated restricted industrial by the land use plan and the LI district does not conflict with any adopted policy guidelines for this area. Furthermore, the request is reasonable and in the public interest because the LI district will permit current industrial use of the property on the property and is compatible with pre with previous zoning approvals granted in the area along Boulder Road. Very well, we have a second. Second. Commissioner McGill has seconded the motion. We have a consistency statement moved by Commissioner Wheatley, seconded by Commissioner McGill. Uh, are there any questions or comments on the motion? If not, I'll ask the recording secretary to conduct a roll call vote. Commissioners, when I call your name, please respond yes or no in response to an approval of the consistency statement for ZA-2006. Mr. Kirkman? Yes. Ms. McGill? Yes. Ms. Stone? Yes. Ms. Swift? Yes. Mr. Venable? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Wheatley? Yes. Chairman, you have seven votes in favor of the motion. Very well. Consistency statement has been adopted. Final public hearing on this item is tentatively scheduled before the City Council on July 20th, beginning at 5.30 p.m. Mr. Chairman, I'll read that August 3rd. August 3rd. August 3rd. I'll note that correction. Final public hearing on this item is tentatively scheduled before the City Council on August 3rd, beginning at 5.30 PM. The next item on tonight's agenda is zoning map amendment 20-07, which is a request to rezone 114 acres to an amended planned unit development a residential district. We did receive a public comment. Did all the commissioners get a copy of that? Yes. And there was some, is, is the applicant present? What's up yeah. Yes. yes, I'm here. Yeah. Um, did she, did uh, she receive a copy of the uh, of the comment we did receive? Yes. Okay. 
Um, I wanted to ask, um, and I'm going to read directly. This is from Mr. Ray Burrell, 919, well known Lane, Colfax. Um, he said, Keystone Group was asking for 450 units. The commission that was present in 2016 decided that was too many for the property, so it was reduced to 300, and Keystone Group agreed that they could build the bridge across the creek and join the property. I think the whole 400.79 acre development. Uh, now it's four years later, and they do not have half the project completed, and are asking for another 102 more units. Um, so, in in general, uh, I think the comment here is related to the fact that the previous agreement in was 2015 or 2016. It was 16. It was 16 her Yes, the application was submitted in late 2015 and okay. the final approval was in 20 early. So the developer had agreed uh, to reduce the number of units to 300 and now they are asking for another 102 more units. Can you address that issue? Is the applicant still with us? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. I, um, I can hear you for a minute there. Okay. Well, in, in short, uh, we had a, a public comment from a gentleman that was questioning uh, the developer had previously agreed to a maximum of 300 units, and now they're back asking for another 102 units. Can you address that? Yes, um, as I said um, Tuesday evening, um, the market has changed dramatically since 2016. Um, at that time, we felt like um, that would make a nice development at 2.6 units an acre. Um, now we're up a little bit more than that, uh, about a, one unit per acre more and um, it will add uh, the density that's necessary to make to pay for the infrastructure and to make it a tax um, positive for the city rather than a burden to the city. Thank you. Any of the commissioners have any comments on the change in number of units? Mr. Kirkman. This yes. is Marie Stone. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. I just have to say I'm uncomfortable with this because of the 25% increase in density and the fact that we can't really address public comment. That's just my comment. Thank you. I, I mean, I. I have, I have a bit of a problem with this too, because once the developer agrees to a certain number of units, I realize the markets change, but there was an agreement. Any other comments from any of the other commissioners on this? This is Joan Smith. Um, yeah. So the one comment I read about the traffic out there, because it is hard to get out from back in there onto Sandy Ridge Road. So would there be any address of getting a stoplight or something? You know, there's basically if you come out of Boyston, you can either turn on Atkins and go down, right. come out on Sandy Ridge right there at Saddle Creek or whatever that is, or you can turn up and go out near up near the farmer's market. Those are the two ways out unless you go back out and off Bunker Hill. So essentially you're asking, are they, they going to do anything to facilitate uh, traffic? Right. One of the there. comments that I read that was the, the, the complaint was that you're adding another 100 homes. And it's already really hard to get out there now, and there and the development's only a third finished. I think is what that person. Yeah, that's, and that's probably a question for the applicant, I believe. Um, thank you. Um, yes, um, the development is being built as um, the traffic impact analysis was described it which was designed for 450 units, not 300 units. So adding another 102 units is still below the level of trips that the traffic impact study presumed when doing that study. Um, so um, we've done improvements on Boylston Road. We've done improvements within, and we've done a turn lane. Um, we'll have um, viable connections um, 
three viable connections um, when we complete this part, plus additional stubs to adjacent properties that um, we all know will develop soon. Uh, do you believe that the full 102 additional units will be built, or is that simply are we increasing the density, hoping you to get that you will be able to use more of the property to get close to the original 300? I can't say that all of those units will be built. As you can see on our track record in Tract B, um, we had planned 120 units and have ended up with 96. On Tract F, we planned 30 units and we've ended up with 28. So no, I don't think necessarily all those units would be built, but it's nice to have the density to work with. Okay, I understand, thank you. I think Toe pole that. You agree? That was. You want to be on the record that Mr. Walsh had a comment? Yeah, I just said the Toe pole that I saw wouldn't stand for that many, but you can always grade it. But I don't see them spending that, and they could. But. Right, Judy? Uh, yes, the Toe pole is very difficult out there. <clears throat> Any other comments from the commission? Uh, Ray Wheatley here. My one comment is that they did the traffic study based on 450. They spent the money and put it in for that to deal with 450. Okay. And now they're down to 402. And they may not build. And they may not build 402. 402. Right. Yeah. So can I just. Yes, just please. Chair <laughs> recognizes so this with. Just want to clarify that if I understand Judy right. So. They're mainly doing this because they've gotten there. The topo is a lot steeper than what they had originated. So they're, they're wanting the option to do it. They may or may not build that many. So. And, and the traffic issue um, was originally addressed because originally they had planned to build more than right. the 300 units anyway. So even if they built at the original, what was the original 50. number they were talking about? So they originally asked 50. for 50. It was actually built to have for, for so 450. 402. Okay. Um, if there's no more comments or discussion for the commission, I'll entertain a motion regarding the commission's recommendation. I'll make a motion to approve zoning map amendment 20-08. We have a second. I think that was Hold on, uh, clarification zoning map amendment 20-07. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Correction. Do we have a second? Second. A motion has been moved by Commissioner McGill and seconded by Commissioner Walsh to approve the request as presented. Do the commissioners understand the motion? Do they have any questions? If not, I'll ask the recording secretary to conduct a roll call vote. Commissioners, when I call your name, please respond yes or no in response to the motion to approve zoning map amendment 20-07. Mr. Kirkman? Yes. Ms. McGill? Yes. Ms. Stone? No. Ms. Swift? Yes. Mr. Venable? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Wheatley? Yes. Mr. Chairman, you have six votes in favor and one vote against. Very well. By a vote of six to one, this application has been favorably recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, we will need a consistency statement for the record. I move that the commission adopt a statement that zoning map amendment 20-07 is consistent with the city's adopted policy guidance because both the adopted land use plan and Northwest area plan designate this as a low density residential, which is a land use classification that supports densities up to five units per acre. Furthermore, the request is reasonable and in public interest because the impacts are mitigated from the requested increase in dwelling units which would be a maximum of 102 additional dwelling units, increasing the planned development to a maximum of 3.5 units per acre. Do we have a second? Second. A consistency statement has been moved by Commissioner McGill and seconded by Commissioner Walsh. There's no discussion or questions. I'll ask the recording secretary to conduct a roll call vote. Commissioner, can I call your name? Please answer yes or no in response to the approval of the consistency statement Zoning map amendment 20 7. Mr. Kerr? Yes. Ms. McGill? Yes. Ms. Stone? No. 
Ms. Swift? Yes. Mr. Venable? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Wheatley? Yes. Mr. Chairman, you have six votes in favor and one against. Very well. My vote is six to one since the statement has been adopted. The final public hearing on this item is tentatively scheduled before the City Council on, will this be the third or? Yes. August 3rd. August 3rd. Beginning at 5.30 p.m. The next item on tonight's agenda is only map amendment 20-08, which is a request to rezone 29 acres to a conditional zoning residential multifamily five district. I do not believe there are any further public comments received on this item. Uh, if the applicant is present, do they wish to add any additional information at this time? Uh, no, thank you. Very well. Do the, uh, any of the commissioners have any questions or comments? Nothing? Very well. If there's no more discussion from the commission, I'll entertain a motion regarding the recommendation for this item. Jim Smith to make a motion of accept as presented. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Swift and seconded by Commissioner Walsh to approve the recommendation as presented. Does everyone understand the motion? Are there any questions? If not, I'll ask the recording secretary to conduct a roll call vote. Commissioners, when I call your name, please answer yes or no in response to the motion to approve zoning map amendment 20-08. Mr. Kirkman? Yes. Ms. McGill? Yes. Ms. Stone? Yes. Ms. Swift? Yes. Mr. Venable? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Wheatley? Yes. Mr. Chairman, you have seven votes in favor of the motion. By a vote of seven to zero, this application has been favorably recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission. I'll now entertain a motion to adopt a consistency statement. I move that the Commission adopt the statement that zoning map amendment 20-00 is consistent with the city's adopted policy guidance because the land use plan classifies this area as low density residential which supports residential uses to density of five units per acre and both the current CUR5 district and the proposed PDRM5 district allow residential development at a maximum of five units per acre. Furthermore, the request is reasonable and the public interest because the proposal would allow the creation of a residential development that would provide a land use transition from the higher density multifamily development adjacent to the south to the lower density single family residential development adjacent to the north. Do we have a second? Five seconds. The consistency statement has been moved by Commissioner Swift and seconded by Commissioner Walsh. If there's no questions, or further discussion on the motion, I'll ask the recording secretary to conduct a roll call vote. Commissioner, can I call your name? Please answer yes or no in response to the approval of the consistency statement for zoning map amendment 20-08. Mr. Kirkman? Yes. Ms. McGill? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Ms. Swift? Yes. Mr. Venable? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Wheatley? Yes. Mr. Chairman, you have seven votes in favor of the motion. By vote of seven to zero, a consistency statement has been adopted. Final public hearing on this item is tentatively scheduled before the City Council on August 3rd, beginning at 5.30 p.m. Is that number eight? Yes. Okay. I thought that just confirmed my note that it was I, I have August 3rd on, on my paperwork. August, that's August 3rd because it's associated with the reason of the annexation. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. That's the one on Morgantown Road. Okay. Um, so we we had four going to the twentieth. That was and four going to the third. That's one of the four going. Typically going to the third. Yes. Oh six. Oh seven. Oh eight. For the Texas are all scheduled for the third. 12, 11, 10, and the first one was the first vote was the 20th. So do we have an official date? Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, 
it would be yeah that would be the august the third okay all right final public hearing on this item zoning map amendment 20-08 is tentatively scheduled for city council on august 3rd beginning at 5 30 p.m next item on the agenda is zoning map amendment 20-10 it's a request to rezone four acres to an amended conditional zoning general business district. I don't believe we've received any further public comments on this item. We'll move to the applicant if there's anything that they would like to add. No, thank you. Very well. And does the commission have any questions or comments on this item? Nothing. Very well. If there's no more questions, excuse me. Uh, Mr. Kirkman, yes. I was just going to remark on what you mentioned the other night, the fact that when we change this, we are setting a precedent for yes. the West Wendover Avenue Guilford College Road plan. Um, and I just wondered about the staff's comments on that. I know they're agreeable, but long range. I know that in the meeting last night, I had asked about, uh, there's a similar sign across the street. Right. And so one of, one of the things that was mentioned was, well, there's already a sign there, so this one should be allowed too. But I also asked, how did the other sign get there to begin with? And I was told by city staff that it existed before this corridor plan was put into effect. And what that told me was, surely council knew that sign was there. And they put a plan into effect to stop any more similar signs being put in. So on the one hand, I, I don't know that the fact that one already exists there is a good argument for allowing another one because it seemed like council's intent was to circumvent any additional signs like that. But if I add a comment of my own, I would say it seems like we have chipped away at this uh, Carter so much on so many things that I, I have a hard time sticking to it anymore. I mean, I think once once you've thrown out various things a certain number of times, it's, it's not really very ironclad. Well, also, it, it'll, it'll be a ticker tape what I'm calling for gas prices. If somebody else came in here with something bigger in a sign like that, we would have the right to say that's not that does not fit in. Is that correct, Lee? Yeah. Yeah, you have the right to review it. it just, let me right. give you a little more background just to the relative to the plan. I don't think there was, there was no real conscious decision to say that the prior development had a sign and we don't want that to happen the rest of the corridor because I don't think that shot, when that quarter plan was done, I don't think that development had fully developed to that point. The, how it evolved was was the quarter plan was done in conjunction with Guilford County and Greensburg. You may remember about that time is when all the big box boom was happening on the other end near Interstate 40 at the time. And Greensburg couldn't keep up with the infrastructure improvements and everything. It was happening much faster than the infrastructure keep up with. And so that was a joint plan that was done by, by the three jurisdictions. The city of High Point indicated that much, and at that time, um, Wendover Avenue was a two lane roadway that hadn't been improved to a four lane divided roadway. It was pretty much recognized by the city that that was going to be another entranceway or gateway into the city. And one of the things they had looked at as far as the plan was whether or not to develop a quarter uh, overlay district, much like East Chester. Uh, East Chester, as you, may, as you know, is, is primarily non-residential in terms of the uses that occur along that corridor. You have industrial, you have commercial, you have office. You do have some residential, but primarily it's a non-residential corridor. Unlike uh, East Chester, Wendover was intended to be primarily residential with multifamily and residential with, with basically some commercial nodes right there with in and around the Penny Road, East Chester node area, and at the further end, right around the Piedmont Center in, in. So one thing the city looked at was whether or not to establish an overlay district, much like East Chester. And it was basically decided that it wasn't really, it was much more appropriate just to condition development when, when non-residential development came in at those two ends of the roadway, it was much more appropriate to condition development to a higher set of standards rather than apply a corridor along the entire roadway that really didn't apply to the vast majority of lands because it was multifamily and those standards wouldn't apply to multifamily. 
but that, that, if you're following me, what I'm, what I'm saying here is that the applicable aspects of the of the quarter plan in terms of of higher standards as it relates to East Chester would only apply where there's commercial development, so where the palladium is and where it, it, this end of the, the, the area. So there still is no commercial development plan in between those areas. This is the last little piece of commercial right there at that intersection. And so when looking at this from the, from the staff's perspective, they are complying with the vast majority of East Chester from a, from a design standpoint, from a landscaping standpoint, from signage with the exception of this one area. Uh, the reason we'll look at it across the street is there is a there is a electronic changeable copy sign. It is being used for gas. Um, unfortunately, we can't restrict it to gas only. Uh, that's something we're going to be addressing in our um, sign order standards that we can't just restrict that to gas only. Otherwise, we would because that's how it's intended to be used from that standpoint. So we don't feel like this is going to set any kind of precedent on quarter because there really is not, not going to be any other commercial development along that quarter that's planned. Everything in between is going to be higher density residential and that thing. Uh, and there is some available land on the other side of the shopping center that could have commercial development, but it already is vested in that HUD development, which, which would allow for that type of signage. So again, if it is any more development that's going to happen, it's going to happen at that intersection, and it's going to happen under that HUD zoning, and they're going to be able to have electronic change the copper signage. That makes sense. Chair sure, recognizes Commissioner Swift. Um, I have a question maybe for Judy um, Stoddard. The, my understanding from what you said on Tuesday is the sign meets all the other criteria. The only difference is it's the same. It meets the size, whatever requirements for signs along there, except this one will just have the electronic piece to it. Yeah. I believe that's correct. Yeah, I believe that's correct. Yeah, yeah, that's that's correct. Correct. exactly right. It's not. Yes. Because that was my question to the president's thing. But then when I heard that, I thought, well, it meets everything. So yeah, we just correct. had that one piece is different. Like I said, they are meeting all aspects of the East Chester Quarter standards with the with this one requested exception. Very well. If there's no more discussion with the commission, I'll entertain a motion regarding the recommendation on the side. I'd like to make a motion. Very we approve the zoning map amendment ZA 20-10 as presented. Second. Second. Motion has been made by Commissioner Wheatley and seconded by Commissioner McGill to approve this request as presented by staff. Do the commissioners understand the motion? Are there any further questions? If not, I'll ask the recording secretary to conduct a roll call vote. Commissioner, can I call your name? Please respond yes or no in response to the motion to approve zoning map amendment 20 10. Mr. Kirkman? Yes. Okay. Ms. McGill? Yes. Ms. Stone? Yes. Ms. Swift? Yes. Mr. Venable? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Wheatley? Yes. Mr. Chairman, you have seven um, in favor of that motion. Very well. By a vote of seven to zero, this application has been favorably recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Now we will need a consistency statement entered into the record. This is Ray Wheatley. I move to the Commission adopt a statement that Zoning Map Amendment 20-8, no, sorry, 20-10. Really? Really? Is, is consistent with the city's adopted policy guidance because the amended CZGB district adheres to recommendations of the West Wendover Avenue Guilford College road plan, except for one aspect of the signage. Furthermore, the request is reasonable and in the public interest because a similar sign is used to display fuel prices and adjacent commercial development located at the same intersection. Very well, I will second the motion. So we have a consistency statement moved by Commissioner Wheatley, seconded by myself, Commissioner Burke. <coughs> Is there any discussion on the motion? Does everyone understand it? I'll ask the reporting secretary to conduct a roll call vote. Commissioner, when I call your name, please answer yes or no in response to the motion to approve the consistency statement for zoning map amendment 20-10. Mr. Kirk? Yes. Ms. McGill? Yes. Ms. Donnelly? Yes. Ms. Swift? Yes. 
Mr. Venable. Yes. Mr. Walsh. Yes. Mr. Wheatley. Yes. Mr. Chairman, you have seven votes in favor of that motion. Thank you. My vote of seven to zero, a consistency statement has been adopted. The next item on tonight's agenda, Zoning Map Amendment 20-11. This is a request to rezone 65 acres to an amended conditional zoning residential multifamily 16 district. I don't believe there were any further public comments received on this item since we met on Tuesday. Uh, would the applicant like to add any additional information? If not, we will turn it over to the commissioners for questions or comments. And Mr. Chairman, just to confirm if you leave, because this is a combined conditional zoning ordinance, they could vote, does that be separate? Can you do it together? Be separate. Two different, yeah. two different ordinances. Is that right? No. Okay. I believe we heard them together and yes. Yes, we vote separately. Thank you. Any uh, further comments from the commissioners? Um, this is Ray Wheatley. Uh, one question I have is there are. Track D is separated from Track C. Do they plan to adjoin that somehow, or and use that in the property? Or well, that would be a question for staff. It's my understanding a different owner, property owner owns that, but they have obtained an easement. Oh, so they could use it by dropping across it. Okay, but I believe that 20 foot sliver is owned by the budding um, quarry. Okay. Anything else? No. Nope. And that. Can you ready? In that case, um, I'll entertain a motion for a recommendation on this item. Uh, Mark Walsh, I'll make a motion to approve. We have a second. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Walsh, seconded by Commissioner McGill, to approve the motion as presented by staff. Assuming the commissioners understand the motion and there's no more questions, I will ask the recording secretary to conduct a roll call vote. Commissioner, can I call you Mr. Kirkman. Yes. Is this is this 2011 or 2012 together? I'm sorry, I'm having trouble mm -hmm. hearing. This will be long distance. Oh, very good. Uh, this vote is specifically being held on 20-11, and then we will subsequently vote separately on 20-12. Thank you. Very good. Uh, recording secretary may call the roll call vote. Okay, Commissioners, when I, when I call your name, please answer yes or no in response to the motion to approve Zoning Map Amendment 20-11. Mr. Kirkman. Yes. Mr. McGill. Yes. Ms. Stone. Yes. Ms. Swift. Yes. Mr. Venable. Yes. Mr. Walsh. Yes. Mr. Wheatley. Yes. Mr. Chairman, you have seven votes in favor of the motion. By vote of 7-0, <laughs> this application has been favorably recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission. And now we will need a consistency statement. This is uh, Mark Walsh. I move that the commission adopt a statement that the zoning map amendment 20-11 is consistent with the city's adopted policy guidance because the land use plan designates this area as medium density residential, which supports a variety of residential use types at densities up to 16 units per acre. Furthermore, the request is reasonable in the public interest because the request amendment only adjusts the timing of the transportation improvements in conjunction with the modifications to track boundaries and does not change any previously required improvements. Do we have a second? I'll second. Consistency statement has been moved by Commissioner Walsh and seconded by Commissioner Wheatley. If there's no discussion or questions on the motion, I'll ask the recording secretary to take a roll call vote. Commissioners, when I call your name, please respond yes or no in response to the motion to adopt the consistency statement for zoning map amendment 20-11. Mr. Kirkman. Yes. Ms. McGill. Yes. Ms. Stone. Yes. Ms. Swift. Yes. Mr. Venable. Yes. Mr. Walsh. Yes. Mr. Wheatley. Yes. Mr. Chairman, you have seven votes in favor of the motion. By vote of 7-0, consistency statement has been adopted. The final public hearing on this item is tentatively scheduled before the City Council on July 20, beginning at 5.30 p.m. The next item is Zoning Map Amendment 20-12, which is a request to rezone eight acres to an amended conditional zoning residential multifamily 16 district. 
Does the applicant have anything additional to offer? I don't believe we got any, any further public comments on this. There's nothing from the applicant or the commissioners. In that case, I'll understand a motion regarding uh, a recommendation for this item. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, approve zoning map amendment 20-12. I will second that, Marie Stone. A motion has been made by Commissioner Walsh, seconded by Commissioner Stone, to approve this request as presented by staff. Do the commissioners understand the motion? Are there any questions? If not, I'll ask the recording secretary to conduct a roll call vote. Commissioners, when I call your name, please respond yes or no in response to the motion to approve zoning map amendment 20-12. Mr. Kirby. Yes. Ms. McGill? Yes. Ms. Stone? Yes. Ms. Swift? Yes. Mr. Venable? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Wheatley? Yes. Mr. Chairman, you have seven votes in favor of that motion. Very well. This application has been favorably recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission. We will need a consistency statement for this item as well. Is that I'm just I move that the commission adopt the statement the zoning map amendment 20-12 is consistent with the city's adopted policy guidance because the land use plan is an excess area is median density residential, which supports a variety of residential use types at densities up to 16 units per acre. Furthermore, the request is reasonable and in the public interest because the requested amendment only adjusts the timing of transportation improvements in the conjunction with the modifications to track boundaries and does not change any previously required improvements. I'll second the motion. This is Commissioner Kirkman. Consistency statement has been moved by Commissioner Swiss, seconded by Commissioner Kirkman. Is there any discussion on the motion? Does everyone understand it? I'll we'll ask the recording secretary to conduct a roll call vote. Commissioners, when I call your name, please respond yes or no in response to the motion to adopt the consistency statement for zoning map amendment 20-12. Mr. Kirkman. Yes. Ms. McGill? Yes. Ms. Stone? Yes. Ms. Swift? Yes. Mr. Venable? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Wheatley? Yes. Mr. Chairman, you have seven votes in favor of that motion. By a vote of seven to zero, the consistency statement has been adopted. The next item on our agenda this evening is text amendment 20-02, which is a request to amend various sections of the development ordinance. I do not believe we received any public comments on this item since we last met. Uh, does the city staff have anything additional to present? No, sir. Very well. Uh, commissioners, floor is open for debate. Questions, comments? I'd like to make a motion that we approve amendment case TA 2002 as presented. Very well. Second. A motion has been made by Commissioner Wheatley, seconded by Mr. Walsh, to approve text amendment 20-02 as presented by staff. Assuming everyone understands the motion and there are no further questions, I'll ask the recording secretary to conduct a roll call vote. Commissioners, when I call your name, please respond yes or no in, in response to the motion to approve text amendment 20-02. Mr. Kirkman? Yes. Ms. McGill? Yes. Ms. Stone? Yes. Ms. Swift? Yes. Mr. Venable? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Wheatley? Yes. Mr. Chairman, you have seven votes in favor of the motion. By a vote of seven to zero, this application has been favorably recommended by the Planning and Zoning Commission. We'll need a, we need a consistency statement on the text amendment. Oh, this, yeah. We do? Very well. I'll entertain a consistency statement motion. Uh, I move that the commission adopt the statement that the text amendment 20-202 is consistent with the city's adopted policy guidance because these general amendments make the ordinance more user friendly and flexible and supportive of the city's adopted policy guidelines. guidance. Uh, furthermore, the request is reasonable and in the public interest because the proposed amendments to the de development ordinance addresses necessary changes 
as a result of the state legislation and continue to pursue making the ordinance error free, easier to read and understand, and more consistent in its use of the language and format. Do we have a second? A second. Here, Venable. Consistency statement has been moved by Commissioner Wheatley, seconded by Commissioner Venable. Pending any discussion or comments on that motion, I'll ask the recording secretary to conduct a roll call vote. Commissioner, can I call your name? Please reply yes or no in response to the motion to adopt the consistency statement for text amendment 20-1.1 and text amendment 20-1.2. Commissioner Wheatley? Yes. Ms. McGill? Yes. Ms. Jones? Yes. Ms. Swift? Yes. Mr. Venable? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Wheaton? Yes. Mr. Chairman, you have seven votes in favor of this. Five votes, seven to zero. Consistency statement has been adopted. I believe that's the final item on the agenda tonight. Does the city staff, do we have anything else that we need to consider before we adjourn? No, I just, if you don't mind, I'd just like to uh, thank uh, Ryan Ferguson with the uh, Department of Public Engagement that uh, helped coordinate this meeting. Tonight, so everything on, we have y'all that connect in remotely, make those connections. Uh, I want to thank Gina and uh, Ferb for the comments, getting the public notices out, and adjusting them and getting the public comments to y'all. And I want to thank the commission for adapting to a change in the curveball. I appreciate it. Well, we managed to stumble through it, I think. Mm -hmm. Good job. Um, I will make a motion that we adjourn this evening. Have a second. Okay. Uh, Commissioner. Uh, with that second motion, do we need a roll call vote on this one? Mm -hmm. one Mr. Time. when I call your name, please respond uh, to the motion to adjourn the meeting. Mr. Gerfman? Yes. Ms. McGill? Yes. Ms. Stone? Yes. Ms. Swift? Yes. Mr. Venable? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Wheatley? Yes. Mr. Chairman, we have seven votes in favor of the motion to adjourn. Very well. Seven to zero, we are adjourned. Yeah. Right. Are you getting overtime? I was thinking about. <laughs>